Listen, let me uh, finish this uh, long entry here, please. Thank you. August 1st, 1975. More than 12,000 people have been resettled already in 1975. Well, thanks for waiting. Uh, sorry to keep you up. Uh, oh, Ted, how are you doing, Ted? Oh, I am very worried that we have no sponsor after two months here at Camp Pendleton. But who will sponsor us with my husband? So troubled. He says he has bad dreams, he cannot sleep. He does not eat. He does not want to admit that he is angry and scared. Still. What you have lived through is a nightmare. God knows. What, Chuck? What does God know? Does he know we left our parents, our house, our life, our friends? Does he know our boat was round and broken? Does he know that we were floating in the ocean Clinging to debris, surrounded by the decaying dead? Does he know why we were saved? Why we lived? While so many others drowned? Oh, does God know that? God knows you're great. God knows that you're safe. God knows that someday, Juan will be able to get past all those bad dreams. Oh, he says he cannot forget. His skin crawls with the salt of the ocean and the smell of the dead. With time, even those bad memories will fade and, and you can start thinking about your future. Look, I will come by this evening and pray with you both. Have faith. I know that you will have a sponsor soon and you'll find a place to resettle and begin your life together. Chop, I am ashamed. I should be happy, but... I am scared also. I want to hope, but I cannot. Well, God knows that you're sad because you've lost so much. But now he wants good things for you both. I know very soon you will be moving to your new home. Oh, bless you, Cha. But please, come later to my husband. How happy we've become. Oh. Just a beautiful dress, Thank you so much for your gift. A beautiful dress for a beautiful bride. It's my pleasure. I never thought I'd be so happy after leaving home. When we came here first, it was all such a blur. But soon we are to be married, and then we are off to a place called Tennessee. <laughs> From the north to the south, all the way across the ocean to the U.S., and now to a place called Tennessee, and your new home. It has kept our faith strong. We have lost our country, but we have our God and we have each other. We're very grateful to you, Tejo. You know, of course, that you might find things to do in Tennessee. It is called the Volunteer State. Volunteer? Yes, that's, that's someone who's willing to work to help others. Just like you, Kejo, you give us money, the food, everything we need. So we're going to do volunteer exactly like you. Thank you, Kejo. My blessing on you and your future together. Pray for us as we pray for you, Kejo. I will be praying when I, when I preside at your wedding, my friends. Come on in. <laughs> that was quite a ride in that Cadillac of yours today. <laughs> quite a ride. Not much on book, but a real mover. Ah, uh, well, you know, I have a reputation for trusting in God a little too much when I get behind the wheel. <laughs> I learned to drive to ride really fast in Vietnam on my motorcycle. And now you survived our Southern California freeway. Ah, uh, now that is a true miracle. How did our bride-to-be like that wedding dress from the Goodwill? You just missed her. And she loved it. I told you she would. I've married off three sisters and I know what brides like. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that memo saying that this relocation camp here at Camp Pendleton is about to close for good? After nine months, your work here is almost done. Well, I've been expecting that, you know. Camp, new, a new arrival is going to be history soon. It's hard to believe that over 48,000 refugees have come and gone through here. And you've met them all, I bet. Mm. I know you kept the logbook. 
and you wrote letters, made phone calls, trying to find sponsors for them all. Thank God you did all that work. Well, they deserve all that and more. You know, I left Vietnam a changed man, stronger, less afraid. This trust in God thing, that has to be practiced. I do see God in it out. And I've been blessed to get to know so many of them. So, what's next, Joe? Ah, huh. well, I've been bothered and disturbed by letters that are trickling in from Vietnam. Life under the communist regime is, is terrible. People there need food and medicine now as much as they ever did. Oh, and what's worse, many of them are being sent to re-education camps. You know what that means. Imprisonment? Torture? Probably both. They're trying to frighten my people into believing that there is no God and into abandoning their faith. They need a priest now more than ever. Hundreds of them are trying to get out every day. It's like, well, it, it, it's like an exodus. Without a Moses. Now, Joe, it took Moses 40 years to get his people to the promised land. <laughs> hey, you're not thinking of going back, are you? I hear they have a hut, they have a price on your head. <laughs> well, I'm a survivor. I survived once. Now, the truth is that the plight of the boat people is horrible. It, it's, a, it's a terrible reality. And I cannot help them escape. But I can help them if and when they make it out. And I have to keep trying. You're really serious about this. Yes. I mean, I thought you were ready to retire. Ah. Well, think you've done enough? I don't think we can do enough. If you heard the stories they told me, if, if you've seen their faces when they, when they talk about their losses and the, all of the, the, the things they've left behind. Okay, Father, do what you have to, but I think you're a little crazy. You ever heard that saying, it ain't over till it's over? Well, Al, it ain't over for me. Okay, Joe, I'll see you at the club for dinner tonight.